Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and in this video we'll be looking at JUnit. JUnit is a popular testing framework that helps us write and run repeatable tests. This means that we can test and debug our code much more easily than just writing print statements everywhere or manually tracing to see what is happening. First, we'll talk about test-driven development and why it is a powerful concept for programmers. Then we'll focus on understanding what a failure trace is and the type of feedback JUnit offers. Finally, we'll take a look at the assertion functions available to us in JUnit, which is basically the syntax we need to use when writing our tests. As we go through this video, keep in mind we'll practice more advanced examples in later videos, but for now, we just want to become familiar with what JUnit is and does. In this section, we will talk about test-driven development and why it is a powerful concept for programmers. Test-driven development is a software development process where the tests are written first before the code. The idea behind this process is that the test will serve as a blueprint for the code that needs to be written. This way, the developer knows exactly what the code should do and can write it to match the tests. This can help reduce bugs and ensure that the code is working as expected. It's important to note that the assurance test-driven development gives us, which is that our code is correct, is very dependent on how comprehensive the tests we write are. So it's very important to always think about the many input cases, including edge cases we might have, and choose a comprehensive sample of tests. Now we'll focus on understanding what a failure trace is and the type of feedback JUnit offers. A failure trace is a detailed report of what went wrong when a test failed. JUnit provides detailed feedback on what went wrong, including the expected value and the actual value, and at what line you can find the test that failed. This information can be extremely helpful in debugging and understanding what went wrong. This feedback is available in both Eclipse and VS Code, and in later videos we'll go through how to trace the failure and interpret the feedback. Now we will look at the assertion functions available to us in JUnit. To test a function using JUnit, we first call the function with a specific set of input values. We then take the result that the function returns and pass it as an argument to an assertion function. There are three main types of assertions. We have assert equals, which is likely the one you'll come across most and is used to compare the expected outcome of a function with the actual outcome. The expected outcome is typically a value we have calculated or determined to be correct. The actual outcome is obtained by calling the function being tested with a specific input. By comparing these two values, we can determine if the function is working correctly. The order of the arguments passed to assert equals is important, as it determines how the failure trace is displayed. The first argument should be the expected outcome, and the second argument should be the actual outcome, so that the failure trace clearly indicates which value was expected and which value was the actual result. Another version of this is used for floating point numbers, that is, floats or doubles and takes in a third parameter. This is due to how floating point numbers are represented in computers where they are not perfectly precise. So we have a third parameter which we call the delta. It allows for tolerance in the difference between the expected and actual values and is typically set to a small value such as 0.01. The next function is assert true and is used to evaluate the truth of a statement or condition. It is typically used when testing a function that returns a Boolean value such as a validation check. For example, if we are testing a function that checks if a number is even, we would pass in an even number as the input and expect the output to be true. The assert true function takes in the statement or condition as a parameter and compares it to the expected outcome of true. If the statement or condition is true, the test will pass. If it is false, the test will fail, providing feedback on where the error occurred. The last function is the assert false function, which is the opposite of assert true. Again, it is used when testing a function that returns a boolean value and we use it when we expect the output to be false for a certain input. For example, if we are testing a function that checks if a number is odd, we would pass in an even number as the input and expect the output to be false. In this video, we introduced JUnit and learned about the principles of test-driven development. We also touched on failure traces and the different assertion functions we'll be using to write tests. In the next video, we'll practice with an example in Eclipse. See you there!